is playing Pikachu and Zekrom, who's recently done pretty well at the Players' Cup uh, also. So, yeah, very good on the online tournaments. Absolutely. And like we said, a lot of the players we see in these tournaments may not have gone to these in-person tournaments for whatever reason. So now they get to flex their Pokemon muscles in these online tournaments and get to show, look, maybe I've not been able to travel to these internationals previously, but actually I am a top, top player. So we've got two very much archetypes that have been around for a long time. So let's head on into the game and see which one of these old favorites is going to be able to get their player into the top four and win that trip to a region, uh, excuse me, an internationals in the future. Yep, and we are going to be following David's side. He's going to be choosing to go second because he is playing Pikachu and Zekrom. You're normally trying to get your Bolton V getting to Electrify early on. His opening hand isn't too shabby. He's got himself a nice supporter play there, if available. And uh, David, he's going to look to get the good old-fashioned ADP out early and get an energy drop on it. You can see David is starting off with a Zamazenta. He's playing quite an interesting uh, list and not really conventional for ADP. He's playing Zamazenta, he's playing Cryogonal, he's playing an interesting uh, lineup of supporters as well. So we'll see if it slows him down. His turn one so far has been excellent though. Gets the energy drop and instantly switches into his ADP. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to switch in the ADP, sometimes you do. But here, you know that the chances of actually being attacked and taking damage are very slim. Like you said, Joe, it's largely going to be just getting that bolt undoubt, out, using Electrify, getting some energy on the board, which does give you a bit of a luxury as the ADP player. It means that you can switch into that ADP. So now, you just need one basic energy next turn to use that altered creation GX, which, of course, is that ridiculous GX attack that says for the rest of the game all your pokemon do an extra 30 damage and every time you take a ko with any of your pokemon for the rest of the game you take an extra prize yeah and david had a really nice top deck got the quick ball so now he can go ahead and establish bolton he's already got switch and the speed lightning energy in hand so pretty much the ideal turn for him here he can draw a couple extra cards from the speed lightning but you're always happy to attach to Mewtwo and Mew in this matchup rather than onto a Pikachu and Zekrom because you love having the option to use Raichu and Raichu to paralyze the ADP after their GX attack. Sometimes it can be your best way at preventing an ultimate ray coming down. The other thing you can try and do is Crushing Hammer. Let's see how this goes. It's a Tails not ideal there, but we do get the Electrify and the Energy. You did see David play the Marnie that over the Professor's Research, but there were three supporters and two switches in hand, and we already saw the Boltund with Energy and Mew to a Mew on the field. Just didn't want to waste those resources. Yeah, he pretty much had already the ideal turn, and he's got himself Quick Ball for next turn. If he wants to convert that into a Dedenne GX, it is something you can go for. Sometimes you do want to be a little bit conservative with those sorts of plays, because ADP can punish it so, so well with the Ultimate Ray for the easy KO. But looking at his hand, he may be forced down that route, because right now there aren't any GX Pokemon that Mewtwo can copy. For David, an attachment to the Zamazenta of a Metal Energy means that this Marnie may have worked wonders here. Yeah, that is not a good hand. If you attach to the Zamazenta, you're giving up on the GX attack, and this is bad. We said that David switched in because he knew he wasn't going to get attacked. Well, well, that was last turn. This turn, he is definitely going to get attacked. That Mewtwo Mew is in the active with free energy. There is the Pikachu and Zekrom. So it looks like we're going to see a full blitz out of this Mewtwo and Mew straight away. Yeah, no need to go fishing with Dedenne. Just go ahead and guarantee the turn. You know your opponent's on a really rough hand, so just grab your three energies, swing them over onto... Wow, going into the Mewtwo. Love trying it. Trying to power up the Tag Bolt GX attack for even more pressure here. And this is brilliant. If you get six energy on, you actually do 200 to the active and 170 to a bench Pokemon. Usually putting all six energy on one Pokemon is a very risky strategy, <laughs> but we can see David's board and we know he doesn't have a great hand. Oh, so David is going to need a switch and he doesn't have a good hand. No, he can draw a couple cards from speed like... Wow! Oh, that'll do. <laughs> that will do it. <laughs> well, he can go ahead and attach to his Bolton and now use Professor's <laughs> Research. Interestingly, if he had attached to the active, he would have also had um, Air Balloon out. But regardless, rips the switch, the ideal turn for him. And he's also got more Crushing Hammers he can play. He was trying to nullify the Zamazenta on the bench by the looks of things. Also gets the Tails, but he can go ahead and Tag Bolt here. 
and sets up the Zamazenta for an easy two hit KO, whilst also taking a three prize knockout before David was able to get any value from that ADP. And this is perfect, right? If you're playing one of these Pikachu and Zekrom decks, this is exactly what you want. You don't usually get those games, we've seen a lot on stream where this didn't happen, where you don't get to put six energy on one of your Pokemon and do that full tag bolt because it's too gosh darn risky. David plays a reset stamp here, and honestly, it looks like David might be in line to just win next turn. Yeah, it's looking likely. Nothing else coming out for David, and David has drawn into... Uh, radar and quick ball so it can be a fodder card as well as a dedene and then you can quick ball into the crobat or into eldegoss and net yourself a ton of cards here you can go crobat into dedene you're just looking for a switch out or an energy plus air balloon combo that's all you need so yeah at least a well it's an 11 card dig minimum here if he chooses to crobat <laughs> And that's before you play any kind of supporter. You draw five with a Crobat, then you can draw six with the Dedene, then there might actually be a supporter on top of that, someone like a Professor's Research. I would be very surprised if David didn't hit the win, hasn't hit it yet does hit a crushing hammer that... It's annoying, you're digging through the switch, but you have to do these steps just in case it doesn't work out. And I think because this is your only Dedene GX in deck, you play this rather than use the supporter. The research does get you one additional card, but you still have outs to the likes of Eldegoss to also play a supporter on the other side of this hand. And there is an Eldegoss now, so he can go digging even deeper. He can turn attach to the active to open up Air Balloon as an out for him now. He plays two copies. That's that why would you're going to see the energy to the front. Yeah. It's awkward. Probably, yeah. I say it's awkward because we've seen these turns before where you, you stretch that little bit too far, you discard a few too many resources, and then you do whiff, but you've got to think it's coming out here. Ridiculous. There, there it there is. There you go. The two air balloons coming in. David can just retreat now and go ahead and attack with anything he wants to. Bolton for the stats <laughs> can go ahead and uh, Bolt Storm as well. Uh, yeah, fantastic game for David. Just able to stick David with the Marnie by the looks of things and uh, is able to bench out David there in a really fast-paced game one. That was a really quick game one. And we saw that when things go wrong with these decks, they can go really, really wrong. ADP, we looked at the first turn there and we went, well, hang on a second, that looks really good. You attach a basic energy, you're already in the active, use altered creation, you are good to go. And then you whiff an energy and then you get marnied into a terrible hand and all of a sudden, just nothing and Pikachu and Zekrom just absolutely rolled. And that deck did fire off that game. That is exactly what you're trying to get if you're playing that kind of deck. Yeah, and uh, David played really well there. He had the optimal turn one, didn't overplay his hand, could have taken that turn going fishing with the Dene, but instead just chose the Pikachu and Zekrom, realized that he was far enough ahead as soon as he gets the attack down. Even if uh, David had a good hand, that amount of pressure coming in from the Mewtwo and Mew that early on is difficult to deal with for any sort of archetype. So let's jump into this next game. I still think it's going to be a very similar flow. The Pikachu and Zekrom deck prefers to go second, the ADP prefers to go first. So both of these archetypes get to do kind of their ideal turns in this exact matchup and it's really just trying to impose their game plan on the opponent every time absolutely well let's head on into game two then see what is going to happen you've got to think that pikachu and zekrom isn't going to have that much of a better start again you, you would imagine right <laughs> you'd hope not and uh looks like yes david is allowed to go second, which he prefers, because David also prefers to go first, because energy drops are still integral for the ADP player side. David with his optimal starter of Bolton, missing the energy right now, but a decent hand still with supporter options galore. Uh, David with one mulligan here, you can see that Rusted Sword does feature in the deck. He actually does play two copies, which could make life easy for him to even knock out the likes of Mewtwo and Mew tag team. Uh, if he is able to start getting his Zashin rolling, which he was unable to do in game one. It was, did start with that Zamazenta, which was not a good starter. Started with Crobat here, incidentally, which is not a good starter. But we see Cherish Ball for ADP. We see the energy attachment, very similar to turn one last game. But like you say, David is in a great hand. And <laughs> straight away looks to play that Marnie. And could we see a repeat of game one? <laughs> Let's see. David needs a few more pieces this time. He has drawn into Cherish and Quick Ball, though. Oh, so that's quickly nice. is able to electrify once again for his favoured target here. 
Yeah, and that Mew to a Mew is huge. The reason it's huge is because when you're doing an extra 30 damage, that Zacian naturally hits 260, which is enough to get Pikachu and Zekrom, but isn't enough to get Mew to a Mew. Now, we know that David is playing two copies of Rusted Sword, which then allows a KO, but Mew to a Mew forces him to have that Rusted Sword. Yeah, absolutely. And just the early tempo of Tandem Shock is super important for, again, trying to force more out of uh, David. You don't want to allow them to have the free ultimate ray that just sort of sits on the board. This archetype doesn't have enough damage output in the early stages to deal with an ADP in one turn. So sometimes you weave in the Tandem Shock, hoping that you buy a freebie off of uh, David. So... Certainly Mewtwo is the best option for this route, especially when you've already been able to check your prizes and you know that Raichu is in the deck. So we are just going to see an Electrify, the optimal turn one play really for the Picaron player. And I'm getting some deja vu here because this was pretty much David's <laughs> turn last game. Even saving that extra draw has got a quick ball in hand, choosing not to play it, doesn't need to play it now. It'll be fine next turn. I've got what I need. And Ooh. again, we see a suboptimal attachment and a pass. Wow, that is rough. The Marnies are just doing the business. <laughs> Daffy, oh. Even giving the Heartbreak a moat. You can't really have a poker face on PTCGO, but when you give a Heartbreak a moat, that's, uh, that's a telling sign. David is going to try and capitalize on this. He's going to bench a secondary Boltund here and goes for the Dead A change, not needing to team Yell Grunt when it's just Metal Energies right now. And we do see... There is switch outs. There's also, interestingly, opting to speed lightning the Mewtwo rather than using the basic lightning here. You can save the speed lightning for draws next turn if you'd like. Instead, he's opting to attach the speed lightning and just switches into the Mewtwo here. He does have a way to discard this Pikachu and Zekrom. So he can also get the Raichu and Raichu out if he wants to proactively and hold the Dene in hand. The only reason to not grab the Dene here is it could get more wild into play. So instead, David is just going to research both of these tag teams to the discard pile. The second Mewtwo is in the deck, so you can quite freely go for this. The only thing with not putting the Raichu down is that you have to find another ball search out. Otherwise, you're full blitzing onto a Boltund here. Which is not really what you want to be doing. Of course, remember that that lightning energy in the discard can be brought back. Oh, we see wow. double heads on Crushing Hammer. That's a bit more important than what I was saying. That is huge. David is not having a good start. And we do see that big attack from the Mew to a Mew, accelerating that energy. It's going to. Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> and tag bolt next gate turn. Got to be done. Oh, say, my goodness. This is just mean. <laughs> that is mean. I was going to say about the Tapu Koko accelerating basic from the discard, but frankly, what happened ended up being a little bit more exciting. And David is setting up for another... Oh, oh no! David is rough. not having the luck. This is so rough. I think you even boss's orders up the yeah. uh, ADP now. Oh, my goodness. This is just wild. The amount of this pressure you can put on with Bolton as well. It's just huge. I, I would want to get the boss's orders... Just drag it into the active. You do a little bit more damage. It's probably not going to matter in the long run. It's, it's only 30 damage difference. The Crobat is going down regardless. You're still bringing ADP very much into KO territory. And the thing is, you've now got so much energy on the board that Boltund is becoming a legitimate, like, big attacker at this stage. Yeah, that's why we're not seeing the GX attack come down here. The Boltund's going to be big enough to deal with the ADP, most likely. There's currently nine energies in play, and uh, that's enough to knock out the ADP. So that's why David is holding back his tag bolt, and David is once again in a terrible position. Still really heartbreak is. emoting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, reset stamped into a quick ball and an Adene, but it doesn't really matter because David uses EGX attack, but it is all going to be for naught because the bolt on switch is in. We click Bolt Storm. Bolt Storm will do enough damage to take a KO. And commiserations to David. Congratulations to David being the first player.